What's going on boys and girls? What's up world? Austin John plays here and today we're going to be taking a look back at things that were cut from Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild that we may see in its new sequel. In my previous video, I san talked about that Breath of the Wild sequel is basically so many ideas that they had for DLC of the first game that instead of making it into DLC, they decided to make a second game. I feel like it would be frowned upon in lots of video game industries, but when it's Zelda, no one cares, everyone wants another game. If you want to hear information as far as that review, be sure to check out the end card. It's going to be probably right about here or so at the end of the video. Also, at the end of the video, we're going to be talking about how to win yourself a Nintendo Switch and $300 V-Shop credit or a copy of Link's Awakening. Be sure to stay tuned to the end of the video for more info. But with all the information that we've had so far for Breath of the Wild sequel, which is not much, so me and fellow YouTubers were trying to put things together as well as the general audience. So I wanted to take a look back at the Creating a Champion book and see some cool designs and ideas in there that didn't make the cut of the game that only makes me wonder all the cool ideas, concepts, and designs that they may have had for the DLC. And as we know that this game is birthed from the idea of DLC for Breath of the Wild, looking back may give us a better idea at the future. Ayanuma san said that he wanted Link to be a much more modern Link than he has been in the past. And when the team went to developing ideas for that, they, one of the first ideas was that Link was wearing jeans, a sweatshirt, and played an electric guitar. I'm so glad that didn't make the cut wholeheartedly. However, that makes me think about there's real no music element to this game. I mean, besides the fact that the music is very bare bones, but you're not really playing an instrument in order to do stuff. Instead, it all relies on the Sheikah technology. They actually had names for the various instruments being Din's drums, Faroe's bass, Nehru's keyboard, and the sacred Tricaster. That would be the guitar that Link is holding. One of the things that I've realized in the game is there's not a lot of enemies. There's a lot of variations of some enemies. There's a fair amount of mini bosses that are fun to defeat, but just going through the world, you have Keese, Choo Choo's, Bokoblins, Lazalfos, Moblins, I'm getting near the end of the list. However, there's been some rough designs and sketches of enemies that are obviously not in the game. Like, look at this thing with the giant eye on it. Don't know what that is. It almost looks like an evil tree. Also, they made Wolf Link here and he looks so adorable. Let's just focus on how good of a pupper he is in these photos. Next is when they were coming up with sketches for the champions of Hyrule. We do see here at the very beginning, there's a very rough sketch of Link or just another Hylian followed by a Goron and then a Zora. And then off to the right, we have this little short guy with a whip and then this taller guy with something hookshot like. Now, as you can imagine, we don't have these two champions in the game, but we do have Urbosa, who is a Gerudo, and we do have Ravioli, who is a Rito. So it appears as though in very early sketches, they planned for this race on the right and for all we know, this could be a male Gerudo. And then we also have, a, I'm guessing, a Korok kid or something. That's the only race of very small people I know in this game. Yes, I know that they were planning on having a race of very small people, but this looks much more like a Korok child. The Korkiri, that's the name. There's also a lot of NPC designs that were not actually brought into the game, but they came up with them, including this very interesting one here of a Sheikah woman who is a ghost. Clearly says that she's a ghost and she looks like a ghost, and this is just something that, to that of my knowledge, has not been implemented in the game. We haven't even seen their designs in data mines or anything else like that, so it is a rough sketch of something that they may have planned to have in the game, but maybe because of the story, it just never happened. That'd be a cool thing to see in the Breath of the Wild sequel. Also, the Sheikah Slate was gonna have a drone function that gave you a remote view. Yes, I'm not joking. If you look here, we can see the Sheikah Slate rough concepts include what's called the Dragonfly, which looks like this little disc that it rotates and then the camera faces down, and then you have these big energy wings that come out of it. It has a tail that comes behind, and it looks like, if we look down here, the Dragonfly Spy, when flying the eye or camera, faces down and the camera parts rotate. I mean, this is awesome. This really takes like the whole 
first person concept to a much larger view. Think of the beetle in Skyward Sword except not being able to pull things around, instead just being a drone spy that kind of helps you look around and see things. Granted, this concept may have been scrapped when they decided to do the towers that you look down from, but seeing this little bit of, uh, this little bit of design work early on seems pretty cool. We could see something like this in the sequel, if the world is just as large or larger, or the same world, but it's changed a lot. We'll see. That brings me to a chic... That brings me to a piece of Sheikah technology that we're all very familiar with, the Divine Beasts. As we all know, they landed on four specific designs, the camel, the elephant, the lizard, and the bird. However, there were a lot of designs that didn't make the cut because of maybe they only decided to do four. However, trailing back to the idea of there were more champions or different champions, there were other Divine Beasts. Here we see the image of a crab, what looks like a giant octopus with a city on top of it. Down here at the bottom left, we have sort of like a manta ray style. And down here at the bottom right, we have a leviathan with a big old cannon on him. This is some, some pretty neat designs. The same way that we learned that the Great Plateau is housing a divine beast, this very well could be, you know, divine beasts that they plan to add in the game. And let's talk about the fact that you can't go underwater in this game. So the whole manta ray concept, while seeming really dope, just never went anywhere. There's a fair amount of ocean in Breath of the Wild and, well, maybe, maybe they'll pull a wind waker and add a lot more water or something. I don't know. That also reminds me of the early Sheikah design that we see hanging in the Hatino Tech Lab. I don't know what to call it, sort of like a whale bird design that's in the top of Hatino Tech Lab. That is a design that looks to be similar to that of the Divine Beast. It might have been a mock-up or a rough design, or maybe the ancient Sheikah while designing them came up with that design, but it just never made the cut. Or maybe the team came up with it and it never made the cut. But they thought it was cool, so they didn't want to hang it up. These are all the designs and ideas that we saw from the actual game. But just imagine once the game was out, once they had this huge full world of essentially all, I mean, if you go by the conversion theory, all these different timelines and elements of these games, they could have put it all into one and then uh, just nothing is out of reach. Or if you stick with the actual timeline listed in the game, including Twilight Princess, then it makes more sense that that is Ganon who was stabbed with the Sword of the Six Ages in Twilight Princess, and now he's locked below Hyrule Castle. All I know is I'm super excited for Breath of the Wild 2. I want to know what you think. Leave a comment down below. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe, turn on notifications. We're still doing a giveaway for a Nintendo Switch or $300 V-Shop credit, as well as a copy of Link's Awakening or Pokemon Sword or Shield. Check the link down below. Until next time, Austin John out.